one of the most famous uh, assertions in the Christian Bible, it's found in the book of Matthew chapter 1, is that in the Jewish Bible, the prophet Isaiah predicted the Messiah is going to be born of a virgin. And it's based upon a mistranslation of the Hebrew. Isaiah speaks about an Alma that would give birth. Alma is a young girl, a young woman. And the Christian Bible insists that the word Alma means virgin. Now, one of the primary ways in which this mistranslation is defended and justified is by appealing to the Greek translation of the Tanakh, of the Hebrew Bible, where missionaries insist that the rabbis themselves, when they translated the Tanakh into Greek, they rendered Alma from the seventh chapter of Isaiah as Parthenos which they say means a virgin. And so the Christian defense basically says, don't accuse us of mistranslating Isaiah as virgin, your own rabbis. When they translated the Bible from Hebrew into Greek, they translated Alma as Parthenos, and that means virgin. And that's where their defense is, is based. However, there are numerous problems with this. Number one, we know that the rabbis, when they translated the Tanakh, I'm sorry, when they translated the scriptures into Greek, they did not translate the entire Tanakh. The rabbis only translated the five books of Moses. We know that the story is told in the Talmud tractate Megillah 9a, that King Ptolemy summoned 72 rabbis from Jerusalem to Alexandria to translate the five books of Moses into Greek. The, the story goes that he put them into 72 different rooms, and at the end, each of their translations matched exactly. This was done in the 3rd century BCE. Now, this story is confirmed by Josephus, who tells us that the 72 rabbis only translated the five books of Moses, and in an ancient Greek letter called the Letter of Aristias which confirms that King Ptolemy had the rabbis translate the Torah, the five books of Moses. It's not clear, it's not exactly clear who translated the rest of the Tanakh. Who did the rest of it? We know that our Chazal, our sages, translated the five books of Moses. But who did the rest of the Tanakh is not really well known. It's not known at all. And... This is confirmed by Christian scholars. If you were to get a contemporary version of the Septuagint, you'll find in the introduction the following declaration is made. The variety of translators, this by the way is our Christian editors of this, the variety of the translators, meaning of the Bible, is proven by the unequal character of the version. Some books show that the translators were by no means competent to the task. Meaning some of the books in, in the Tanakh, you can see were done very poorly. While others, on the contrary, exhibit on the whole a very careful translation. The five books of Moses is considered to be the part best executed, while the book of Isaiah appears to be the very worst. By the way, Isaiah is exactly where we're looking to find the defense of this mistranslation for the virgin birth. Number two, in ancient Koine Greek, the word Parthenos does not mean virgin anyway. It really means the exact same thing that Alma means, which is a young woman. This is confirmed by uh, one of the leading scholars of ancient Greek, Spiros Zohadiatis, in his commentary to the Bible. And it's confirmed in the Septuagint's translation of Genesis chapter 34 which is a story of the rape of Dina. When the daughter of Jacob, Dina, is raped 
So there, if you get the Greek translation, it speaks about her after her being raped as a Parthenos. So clearly Parthenos does not mean a virgin. Furthermore, the entire Septuagint, both the, the Chumash, the five books of Moses, and the rest of the books of the Bible, were not valued by the Jewish people. They were not studied by the Jewish people. They were not preserved by the Jewish people. If you go to any Jewish library, you'll never find the Septuagint. Um, it's basically a book that Jewish people dissociated themselves from. One of the ways we know this is that our sages tell us that when this translation was done, we didn't want to do it. We were forced to do it. And the sages proclaimed it. The sages saw this of an event of the translation of our Bible into Greek as a tragedy. And the sages proclaimed a fast day. The tenth day of Tevet is a day where we mourn this terrible tragedy of the translation of our scriptures into Greek. So this is a version of the Bible that was not really ours. It's not one that we study, that we preserved. And so the question is, so who preserved these books? And we know that they were preserved only by the church. And we know that the version that we have today is not the version that our rabbis made. How do we know this? Because, because it's fine, because the Talmud tells us that when the sages translated the five books of Moses into Greek, the Talmud tells us that the sages made about a dozen editorial emendations to the text. That the rabbis, in order to make sure that people did not misunderstand their reading of the Greek, they made some editorial changes in their translation. And the Talmud gives us those editorial changes. If you study the Talmud's list of these changes and you compare it to the version, to the text of the Septuagint, to the five books of Moses that we have today, you will not find these editorial changes. That proves that whatever version of the Septuagint we have today is not our version. Another important point is that the Christian Bible when quoting from the Hebrew Bible, very frequently does not quote from the Masoretic text, which is again the text that we as a Jewish people have preserved and passed down. They go to the Septuagint, the Greek translation. Why is this strange? It's strange because our Tanakh was not written in Greek. And the Christian Bible itself says in the book of Romans, that God entrusted his oracles to the people of Israel. The Christian Bible admits that God entrusted his scriptures to the Jewish people. And that if it wasn't for the Jewish people, there wouldn't be a Bible for Christians to read. Therefore, the only Bible that's reliable is the one that's been passed down by the Jewish people, which is the Masoretic text, and not a Greek translation that was done by who knows who. One very interesting example of this is from the Christian Bible, Book of Acts, chapter 7, where in verses 14 to 15, it says, those of you who know the, the Chumash, the five books of Noah's as well, will spot the problem. In the Christian Bible, Book of Acts, it says that 75 people went down to Egypt. 75 people went down to Egypt. Whereas in the Book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 27, in Exodus, chapter 1, verse 5, in Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 22, we're told it was 70 Jews that went down to Egypt. So what happens? 
How is it possible for the New Testament to say it was 75? So the answer is very simple, because they're not quoting from the Jewish Bible. They're not quoting from the Masoretic text, they're quoting from the Targum Shivim, the Septuagint. And the question would be, what is the authority of this Greek translation? How does anyone have the right to ignore the Hebrew text that's been passed down faithfully by the people that God appointed to be the guardians, his witnesses, over his text? How can anyone ignore what the Hebrew text says and base their Bible upon a Greek translation that we don't know who did it? What is the authority of that translation? And why does it supersede the Hebrew text?